Hello, I'm John Moyers, and welcome back to Social Distortion Podcast. We have many things to talk about this time around, and there's uh, a lot of things I would like to discuss. Um, a lot of the times, though, uh, I have a guest here who usually um, I bounce these ideas off of so we can just have another sort of opinion on the matter so it's just not one-sided for me because I think it's really important to not only understand a perspective of someone else but to get to the bottom of how two people think because at the end of the day I think most of the problems in our life boil down to two people with different opinions on a subject um, so I usually have a guest I don't this time maybe next time we'll be lucky enough and I'll snag someone to come in and help me out with the commentary but for now it's going to be just me um, you know I haven't really truly felt like doing one of these and I feel like this isn't isn't really the place for me to be like oh no sorry me you know I, I just haven't felt like getting up and writing a script to uh, <laughs> talk into a microphone for 40 minutes about something I have an opinion on that maybe no one cares about you know like oh woe weighs me about it but you know I haven't really felt like doing it but the reason I, I like doing this podcast was because I, I, I felt like it, it helped people and not only do I do I feel like people were responding to it I felt like it wasn't always the response that you were used to on the internet which is almost the topic of today uh, but now I'm feeling pretty good. I think this is a perfect time to start talking about some of the problems that I've been seeing and see uh, if that resonates with you. So let's get into it. So let's run off of what I was just saying about people reacting to the podcast. You know, um, I talked about a lot of, I think, not, I think controversial topics, honestly. Uh, you know, I, I had a lot, I think, of deep discussions with people about problems on the internet and problems online and uh, I, I think a lot of that resonated with a bunch of people and some people didn't agree with me and I think that was the whole point you know I, I don't think that I'm any authority on these matters uh, I don't think my word is fact I think that everything that I'm saying right now is a very much a subjective matter of I can have this opinion but at the end of the day, it's like throwing it into the wind that is the internet. Whether or not it has any merit, I think, is just based on who's hearing it. And it kind of resonates with what I want to talk about. <clears throat> more and more recently, the thing that I'm seeing constantly, and I mean, it doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I think it's always the forefront of the internet. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Twitter, uh, the little scamp, you know, that brings people to suicide and makes 17-year-olds think that they need to get therapy and then shame them for getting therapy. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that today and really getting into some topics that I don't even know if I should be talking about, but we're going to do our best to be respectful and I, at least my best to be respectful and to talk about them. So I want to talk about the stuff that was happening with Tommy in it. And I, I'm not talking about Tommy in it so this gets more views or, you know, like it, it blows up a little more. I get those 12 extra people. Like um, I make it a point not to monetize these videos. So like I'm not gaining anything from that. But uh, the experience that I've seen with Tommy in it and what happened with him really was shocking. You know, because the kid really didn't do anything bad. But the reaction that I would almost say that his fan base had was so toxic that it drove him to almost want to quit the platform itself and to seek mental help. That is insane. I mean, uh, I, could, I couldn't imagine being in someone's shoes like that uh, where, well, you know, I, I, could, I could relate to it, but not realize the pressure it could put on someone in that moment like um I couldn't imagine being Tommy making this joke about Jay Schlatt on Twitter and that's what it all stemmed from it, it stemmed from Tommy in it basically just making an offhanded joke about Jay Schlatt and the community not really be being too accepting of Schlatt's behavior or his 
jokes, um, which, which is another topic in and of itself, of people dictating and thinking that they have a say of what other people can say and do on the internet to a fact where it's almost like a dictatorship of, hey, you can't say this because it's offensive or it's wrong or it doesn't fit my version of perfect and normal. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Let's, let me just reel it back into Tommy in it. So Tommy makes this remark about Jay Schlatt. People get upset because people don't like Jay Schlatt. And it's almost weird because Tommy making this remark has almost nothing to do with Jay Schlatt at all. But then it turns into this big thing for Tommy. Like it was trending always because anything Tommy does is always the front trending page of Twitter. You know, the guy could sneeze and I'm sure it would be on the trending page. So he says this joke about Jay Schlatt and people freak out at him, uh, almost asking him not to be friends with Jay Schlatt, uh, basically saying, like, this isn't right, going into these, like, rants about it being homophobic, about it being unright to support Jay Schlatt or even to talk about Jay Schlatt or these, like, like long, long things that just truly boggles the mind. And, and from what I got from it was that people were taking how they how they felt out on Tommy. And I, I don't mean a few people. I mean thousands of people just were gaining up on him for making this joke. And I just, I just, it, I don't understand it personally. You know, it's like, uh, it, it, it's just weird to me that people think that they have that power, you know, like over a creator, you know, especially Tommy like this, uh, what, what, he's 17 and he has all this. He, he honestly he handles it very well. I think better than anyone, you know, could probably handle it. Like he has a good handle on himself. He, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's went to the kid's head. Like he's level headed and he's respect, he's respectable. You know, like he, when he talks about these topics, you can honestly tell there's a sincerity about it where he cares about people and that he understands that people just have differing opinions and you can't make everyone happy. But when you have the Stan culture basically going, you cannot do this. You cannot mention these things. If you do, you know, it's over, you know, like you have lost our support. May God come down and cut off both of your hands. You do not deserve to be on this platform you don't deserve to have a platform. You don't deserve to be a creator. Go die in a ditch, basically. And that's the feel I get from it. That's the hostility that I see from it. And it's every day on Twitter. It's not just with Tommy. It's just every day there's always something to hate. And I feel like that's what it is. It's these people latching on to hate and that being the thing that fuels them the most. They take that feeling of hate and they push it and they push it and they push it. They, they make that their thing. And then it just spirals into something it's not. Do I think Tommy in it should have got a bunch of shit for making a Jay Schlatt joke? Of course not. I think it's idiotic that people think that they have the the audacity to think that they have the power to tell someone what they can or cannot do online. And I think it's even more laughable that Jay Schlatt is just a character. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like if you watch the weekly slap which i think like like people got on tommy for mentioning it in one of his streams like uh i i seen this recommended clip on youtube actually uh where it was like he was talking about the weekly slap and how it helped tommy like get through quarantine and then people were like really upset at him for mentioning it and saying to watch it and it was like jesus christ man can you can you not even mention people like even if you don't agree with them entirely like their existence to you like the mention of their existence brings you to this curdling like scream that you have to be so bludgeoned to someone who has really nothing to do with them uh, it's it's just really interesting right because tommy obviously likes schlatt in a way like he likes his content and I, you know, like I can only assume that they're friends. I don't know them personally, but for people on Twitter to take it upon themselves to bully Tommy to the point of wanting 
to seek mental help. And then when Tommy opens up about wanting to seek mental help, these people attack him for that as well. I'm sorry, I thought we lived in the generation of acceptance. You know, we don't we don't attack people for being open about wanting to seek mental help. We we accept that they want that help. We accept that they need that help. You don't continue bullying that person <laughs> for trying to not even like better themselves because it wasn't like something Tommy, like it wasn't like a mental thing that Tommy put on himself. You know, it wasn't that Tommy was depressed. It wasn't that Tommy needed to get through something. It was that his own fan base attacked him to the point where he now needs to seek therapy. That's wild. And I, I think like that, that culture and that atmosphere is toxic. I don't think there's a more toxic platform out there than Twitter. Because I think it's like a virus. It's a, it's a breeding ground for hate. And I and I think that most people with with a sensible look at it, when you step back and you look at it, it, it just it, it hurts you. Because you see these people saying all these things. You see these people behind the screen screaming these things at other people, whether it's political, whether it's personal. And people just get so upset that they cannot separate it from the person like it's like people idolize Tommy in it so much that if Tommy in it is friends with Jay Schlatt breaks almost the idea of what Tommy in it is to them you know it's like Tommy in it isn't a person like Tommy in it is a brand Tommy in it is this like golden statue that kids put on their shelf and if that golden statue has a chip in its shoulder or if it's not purely made of gold then they want to trash it they want to throw it away they want to call it trash because it's just not good enough for them like you're not being good enough for the internet which is just fucking stupid you know um it, it made me really sad when i seen it, it made me really sad uh because i feel like it was just undeserving to tommy for his own fans to treat him that way Maybe they're not even his fans, you know. I, I, I think if you can act that way towards someone, then it, it, you're not fans of that person. You're not a stan of that person. I don't care if you think that you're in the right because you think that you're, you know, defending something you're passionate about. You don't have to bring others down to educate people or to be on an opposing side of an argument. You know, and that's and I think that's the problem. People seen what he said got upset and then it just kept spiraling down and nothing Tommy could have ever done would have, you know, chilled the coals that is the hellscape that is Twitter. And I, I say Twitter, but it's not really Twitter now, is it? It's it's people. I say Twitter is a toxic platform, but, th but th that's not true now, is it? Because it's not Twitter's fault. Twitter exists, but it's not Twitter putting out these tweets. It's not twitter the, the the platform that's making these people do these things it's it's the people i think it's unsupervised kids i think it's people who think that their opinions matter more than anyone else's and look at me talking about my opinion like it matters more than someone else's right but on twitter and the people on it the people let's get down to the people of this people who would claim to be fans and stands of dream and of tommy would then go right around and attack them maliciously to the point where they would feel threatened, right? Isn't that disgusting? Like, do these people not feel anything for that? Like, is empathy just out the window when it comes to online interaction anymore? Is it that separation between creator and consumer where the consumer feels like they have complete domain over the creator? And I just, I just feel like at some point, like if that is the normal, like everyone here, everyone is going to need help because it's just not healthy. It's just not a good mindset to have going off of the Tommy in it topic, um, which I, I think I've covered everything I could without repeating it again, uh, talking, talking about everything that's happened with him. I'm sure there's going to be more. It's, it's Tommy. I'm sure like in two weeks, like uh, his socks are going to smell funny and they'll, give him a bunch of backlash for it, you know, 
But the next thing I want to talk about, uh, which was something that happened pretty recently, was the whole thing with Scott Kaufman. If you don't know who he is, he basically created uh, the lovely community of FNAF. Uh, I've certainly uh, gotten myself involved in the FNAF, uh, making a, a job out of it at one point. But um, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because people found that Scott had donated money to a, I, I think, a Republican candidate. And he just didn't give money to a Republican candidate. Like, I think he gave money to multiple things and, you know, also charities, you know, things that helped everybody. But let's not get into that. Let's not gloss over that. Let's get over to the things that people hate. But some of these politicians uh, had opinions about trans transgenders, uh, about the, about <laughs> the LGBTQ plus community. And, um, people didn't like that Scott supported that or supported a candidate, which is weird to me because it has nothing to do with Scott himself and everything to do with Scott freely expressing his absolute right to vote for who he thought was the best candidate for the job, which is what all of us do, by the way, just not Scott. We all try to figure out who we think will represent us the best when we go out and vote. That's why you need to try your best to educate yourself on, you know, your local community. I try my best to even read the newspaper to see what's happening and who these people are and what they are trying to support. But at the end of the day, Scott can do what Scott wants. And when people figured out that Scott, oh God, Scott gave money to this politician or these politicians that these other people didn't agree with, they just, you know, went wild. And I'm not talking, they were like, hey man, Scott, these, these politicians, like they, they support things that are, that are really weird. Have you seen it? No, they were, you know, sending death threats to his wife and you know, trying to threaten him and his children, that that kind of threat. And like, not only that, but like disowning FNAF entirely as a thing, because obviously separating a creator from content or a creator from political views is something that you cannot do uh, because they're obviously intertwined in every way. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make here is that people got upset at Scott for something that someone else has an opinion on. It wasn't Scott being like, you know what? I hate uh, these communities on Twitter and I hate you guys. No, it was Scott expressing freely with what he can do with his money and his position and who he thought was best to vote for. And people went ape shit about it. And then when you peel it back more and you see people not being accepting of Scott's decisions, but rather attacking Scott for the choices he made, it, it, it's just boggling. If you didn't know, and I don't know if there's any updates from this so far, but Scott uh, will no longer be producing any FNAF games or the, I guess, being a part of it anyway. Like he is not going to be a part of it anymore. Which fucking sucks. Because basically Twitter bullied a man. Or like I think it even scared his wife who was pregnant. To the point where he's like, I just, I can't do it. Like these these people, they're sending me death threats. They're, they're threatening my family, my wife. All because of who I support in an election. And, and don't get me wrong. I think every politician will tell you exactly what you want to hear to get them voted in. But that's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about Scott. And the fact that he was ran off, basically, of, 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 of everything. The internet, his own project, the thing that he created. And I, I don't think Scott needs the money anymore. But he did a lot of good things for the community. which So, so it just surprises me that... That same community, maybe not the same people, but these people would go so far to attack him, berate him, and threaten him. It's almost unhuman. 
it's almost unreal you know it's the kind of thing i think you would see in a drama movie you know like these things like when i see them it's like this cannot be real people cannot be this disconnected to think and talk like this you know to make a man who has worked to help a community of people in the lgbtq plus community people like in the gaming industry, like indie games, like helping and funding people to follow their dreams. They just, they, they just can't turn around and fucking hate this guy because of who he voted for. God, you know, it's like I'd hate to one day have a bigger audience and then someone be like, this guy, he he voted, he voted for Clinton back in 08 or whenever Clinton was elected, you know, it's like it's 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 stupid and irrelevant to to what i would be doing you know like as a creator you create and i feel like there's just this like almost like the, the, this god complex that not as a creator we put on ourselves but the people who consume the content put on us you know they they look at a creation as something pure and when the person who creates that content isn't or it doesn't fit exactly, and I mean exactly how they feel, then it can't exist in their world. And isn't that just the, the kick in the nuts, right? Like, I feel like the one thing I see all the time is that we live in a time where we should try to learn to be more accepting of everybody, of race, color, gender, you know, like, no matter what your ethnicity is, no matter what your sexual preference is, no matter if you don't even want to identify as a person, you know, we try our best to accept everybody, but then those same people in those same communities, uh, even even people like me, will go out and attack someone for basically nothing. I don't think you can attack Scott for having a political opinion because I don't think his political opinion has anything to do with him creating FNAF, and I think it has less to do with the LGBTQ plus community because at the end of the day, Scott voted for the person that he thought would you know do the best job and i think that's actually what he said you know like it just didn't matter and i feel like it's it's almost like everyone feels like if we don't agree with what they have to say then we shouldn't exist or we shouldn't be on that platform or we shouldn't have it because if you do have it and you're not using it I don't know to to what how they feel is the best capable thing like if it doesn't fit someone else's opinion of perfect you know like their subjective moral opinion of perfect then you should just you know get death threats you know uh and it just doesn't make sense to me and it made me sad and i'm, and I'm happy that people turned around and realized that it was fucking stupid and then started supporting like like people were pouring out support for scott after they heard about this shit happening to him but when it was happening you know those same people were threatening scott and tweeting about scott and you know i still see it now it's like uh, every day on twitter you go on twitter you check the trending page you, you'll see hundreds thousands of tweets being like Hey, you guys, do this, do that, do this, because you're still following this, that, or this person. Or, hey, you need to do this, that, or this. And I don't agree with this, that, or this of that you're doing. And maybe and maybe this is just me just repeating the same point, but I don't think it matters too much. Maybe that's an oversimplification of the matter, but... It doesn't matter who Scott supported. It shouldn't have mattered to the community who Scott supported. Because Scott, as a person, helped that community so much. And now he's gone. He's not going to be like that creative mind behind it anymore. And that is awful. And I think the people who did that should feel really shitty for what they did. But I don't think they will. Because they're the same people who will do it next week and not learn a damn thing about it. I think it's a lack of empathy. I think it's a lack of putting yourself in anyone else's shoes but your own and being so self-centered that you think that your life and your point of view is the only point of view that exists. I don't really know how to end this. And I know this is a bit shorter and maybe it's a bit preachy. And I'm sorry if it is because, you know what, my opinion on this stuff I don't think truly matters either. You can disagree with me. You can be like, no, Scott deserves all the death threats he got. He, his pregnant wife deserved it. And so did he. How dare he agree 
and vote and support someone with that political opinion. You know, like maybe I'm full of shit. Who knows? And maybe Tommy in it deserves to go to therapy and be belittled every two weeks because of something he says on the internet. Or maybe people should realize not to idolize creators and put them on this pedestal. And maybe even more so, we should learn that we're all human. And that as humans, we're not always going to agree with each other. We're not always going to come to the same conclusion as each other. We're always going to be bouncing from this to that. We want to be accepted. We want to be free. We want to feel like what we say has meaning. But as I'm doing this in my room alone, and I've been, you know, alone for a few months, you know, quarantine and all this, the only people I talk to are my family, basically, as I do content with a few of my friends, the only thing I got, I got to say to all of this is we all need to try to be better. Not just the people who think they are better, not just the people who aren't better, but as a community, if it's to go forward, maybe we listen a little more to everybody. Maybe we don't attack people for things that don't matter. And maybe that it's just not worth it in the end. Because if you're doing that to somebody, then you're you're the problem. You know? I've never seen more accepting people get so much hate in my life. Undeserved hate. But maybe that's, maybe I'm just wrong. And then I'm okay with that. I can accept that. Anyway, I know this was a bit of a ramble and I know it was a bit everywhere. Uh, usually I have this little synonym, I would say, or a little prayer at the end of these. But um, I don't have one <laughs> this time around. Uh, but I do hope you enjoyed the Social Distortion podcast. I know this episode was a bit shorter and I know I just talked about some trending topics. But I do hope that we could continue to have open discussions and open conversations about these things. Obviously, if you think differently, I'm open to that opinion and you can express it down in the comments below. I'll read them. I read all the comments and I just hope that you guys stay safe and you know, you just you just try your best because at the end of the day, trying your best and never trying at all, you know, it, it goes a long way. Love you guys. Bye.